Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench. So today I just want to do a quick little video um, on this uh, PitKit 2 that I just recently built and a couple of problems I had when making it. Now, um, I built this exclusively, well, not exclusively, but initially the entire purpose of this is to allow me to program my uh, Hacko, um, well, my new Hacko knockoff DIY open source thing, um, soldering iron controller, uh, which I want to build um, to allow me to use the uh, T12 handle and cartridge style tips and everything. Because um, I want a more powerful soldering iron and I want something with uh, tips that I can use that are a bit larger than the uh, ones you can fit in a Hacko 936 style, which is what I have. Um, and to program the microcontroller that runs the uh, soldering station, uh, I needed to build this programmer to be able to program it. Um, now this uh, PICKIT2 itself uh, uses a PIC 18F uh, 2550, I think. Um, which of course you do have to actually program with the PICKIT2 software. So it kind of presents an interesting problem because this is a. Uh, this is obviously you can't use it to program itself, so you need to program this uh, separately. So either you find someone who has one of these already, and you get them to program it for you, or you program it in some other way. Now, there are three options I suppose you have for that um, to do it yourself. Uh, the option I used myself was to program that chip with this other programmer here. Now this is a Willem. Um, version 5 EEPROM programmer primarily, uh, but it can do some microcontrollers as well. Uh, it can do some of the uh, PIC series, usually the older parts and smaller parts, um, and none of the modern ones, um, as far as I can tell. I mean, theoretically I suppose it's possible because this thing is just a simple parallel port connected thing that just passes the data through and you've got a few shift registers and stuff um, and really I think as long as you had the software support uh, you could probably program just about anything um, but at the moment as far as I can tell the software doesn't support uh, the chip which I actually want to use in the soldering station so it does however support this one here which is good because uh, that's what I used so um, you can't plug it in on the socket here. This socket is designed for PIC 16Fs, I think. Um, it's not big enough, obviously, for this one here. Uh, not enough pins, it's about half the size. Uh, but it does have an ICSP header, so I was able to plug some jumpers into that and run them over to the board here to uh, program this um, from there. And it took a few goes to actually get the programming to work. Um, I'm not sure why exactly. Uh, I think maybe the lines were just too long and maybe there was noise in that, but eventually it got there and uh, I was able to program it and everything is working fine now. Or at least um, it is working fine now. It wasn't working fine initially uh, once I programmed it, but I'll get into that later. Um, so yeah, so this obviously most people won't necessarily have one of these lying around. Um, I was... Uh, already had this and fortunately it supported the chip. <laughs> but yeah, um, there is another way to do it, well, another way theoretically to do it is to use an Arduino. Now the good thing with the Arduino is you don't need any special programmers to uh, make this. Um, I programmed this purely with a another serial port um, connected programmer, um, the basic uh, STK200 based programmer. So this is a uh, kind of a improved knockoff of the uh, basic parallel port program that you can use um, for Atmel parts. And uh, it just has like a 74HC 244 I think in here. And it just uh, sends everything through here. So you can get a 6-pin uh, cable. I've also got a 10-pin cable you can plug in. just uh, goes into the socket here. So you can uh, swap it around usually one you want. So this is a very basic, very simple thing. And it works really well. Um, I usually program with uh, AVR Dude or similar software. So you can you, you can build one of these with a standard logic part, a few resistors, etc. And you can use that to program the original Arduino bootloader onto your board. And then you can use this with the uh, software 
as much as you like and you can reprogram it to your heart's content and do whatever you want with it and you don't have to you know it's very simple to build this and there's no uh, necessity to buy any um, advanced pre-programmed hardware or anything you can of course get uh, more advanced Atmel programmers like the pit kit um, or you could until Microchip bought them out I suppose um, maybe they don't sell it anymore I don't know I guess the uh, Pitkit 3 or something is probably going to support the uh, Atmel stuff now. So, anyway, um, yeah, now someone did create a sort of a Pitkit kind of clone uh, for the Arduino, which was designed to program this. Um, and I tried to use it actually because I thought I'd give it a go and see how it worked because I thought it would be a a good thing to uh, do a video on, but unfortunately it didn't work at all. I mean, it worked to some extent, but the code didn't support the full um, program code that this needed to be programmed with, um, because the program, I think, um, needs to be programmed into the program ROM, and also it does some configuration EEPROM stuff as well, and um, this uh, the software that was written for this only really supported the main program code area and didn't support the rest of the chip. So. I wasn't able to program that. I was successfully able to program a uh, sort of test um, program which flashed the lights um, because that only used a small area of the chip. Um, but to try and do the full code for the PitKit 2 just didn't work. So, yeah, uh, unfortunately that didn't work. I suppose if you change the software and, and upgrade it, it probably just needs a bit of uh, rewriting. But uh, as it is, it, it doesn't actually work for doing that, which is kind of sad. Um, but I do think there is possibly a parallel port-based uh, programmer for PIC microcontrollers. Um, I think it's called the JDM programmer. I've never used one, I've never built one. Um, but I think you could use that to program this, because this is a 5 volt tolerant part. Uh, I don't think the JDM programmer could be used necessarily for programming really modern um, microcontrollers uh, that support like you know 3.3 volts or 1.8 volts um, maybe if you put some sort of level shifting in you could but um, yeah that's probably your only other way to do it unless you can find someone else to program one of these for you or buy a pre-programmed one somewhere um, but anyway so eventually I was able to program that with my Willem and it finally was kind of working. Well, it didn't really work at all. It, uh, well, basically I plugged it in and the magic smoke came out. <laughs> well, not out of the chip fortunately, um, out of this uh, little op amp that was down here. So, they use an op amp, uh, I think it's an MCP6001, I think, maybe. I'm not sure. That's probably completely wrong. But anyway, it's used to, uh, I think, detect the uh, target VCC voltage because this can um, support, obviously, it can support powering the target board or the target microcontroller at least um, from the onboard power and it can select that um, anywhere between 1.8 to 5 volts, I believe. Um, so you can program the lower voltage parts with this, even though it is a 5 volt. USB design, which is quite good, and it needs this uh, op amp for feedback, I believe, to uh, let the microcontroller know what the voltage on the output is, so it can adjust the uh, duty cycle of this little boost converter here, or whatever, or uh, adjust something anyway. Not entirely certain how this works totally, but uh, there's definitely some uh, stuff going on there, and there's an op amp for feedback, which is obviously necessary. Now, the problem with that was that I uh, Flip the uh, schematic symbol um, to get the uh, the inputs up around the right way to make the schematic easier to draw up, and I forgot to uh, change the power pins, so I ended up basically connecting the op amp backwards to the supply rail, even though all the other pins were correct, and of course it just burnt up. Um, and you can see here, hopefully, if I can get this uh, in focus, you can see where I've uh, made some modifications to the uh, board there added a couple of jumper wires to uh, get everything in the correct way um, and that's uh, come out fiddly kind of thing but it worked in the end and I put a heat shrink on the uh, wires there so that 
and they wouldn't touch because obviously there's no solder mask on this board. Um, but yeah, I had to move uh, this decoupling capacitor. Uh, one of its pins was originally in that hole where the blue wire went, um, and the blue wire went in the hole where the uh, capacitor is. So uh, I switched those around, that made it a lot easier, and I used one of the leads of the capacitor to um, to uh, bend over and go to the pad for the op-amp, and then I used another short bit of wire um, to do the other one. But anyway, so then that worked. Uh, at least it didn't uh, burn up when I plugged it back in, but the thing still didn't work. It uh, still actually had a short somewhere. As soon as I plugged it in, it actually uh, shut down and the LED, power LED, just glowed really faintly. Um, so that was interesting. So I looked uh, some more at the um, schematic and found another error where I had two wires uh, crossing over each other in the schematic that were just supposed to cross over and weren't actually supposed to connect but by accident they'd uh, crossed near a pin and they'd actually connected so um, that was these uh, MOSFETs here, there's two of them I think a P-channel and N-channel used to switch the VCC target um, on and off depending on whether the uh, board you're programming actually has a voltage supply to it already um, or if you want to pro uh, if you want to power it from this board here so this will automatically detect if your target board is already powered and it'll switch the uh, supply off so that it's not uh, trying to you know you're not going to get some short circuit between this thing trying to power it power something that's already powered and um, it'll just only connect the data lines um, and that was uh, these MOSFETs here, so I can just get this uh, in focus there. Um, you see that kind of diagonal wire? Ah, there we go. So you can see kind of a lighter patch between these two pads um, where I've actually scraped off the track. So originally, uh, let's see, originally there was a track that went from these two pads there. Um, Uh, silly autofocus. And uh, this uh, pin that I've done from this pad to this pin of this transistor, so I added that, it's just a wire link, a piece of wire. Um, and there was a track that went from this pin to this pad and from this pad to that pad, which I uh, had to rip up those two traces because they were incorrect, so that was uh, mistakenly connected. And basically that was just shorting out the uh, whole supply output thing running to the target board. Um, so yeah, I had to uh, fix that, and now it finally actually works, which is very useful, and now I should be able to program my soldering iron controller IC um, eventually when I finish building that. So I've got pretty much all the parts I need for that, apart from some of the mounting hardware for the transformer and stuff, so I'm just waiting on a few nuts and bolts and things like that. But once I get all those, I'll be able to start building that as well. I have to finalize the... PCB layout for the front panel PCB that uh, holds the displays and the uh, buttons and stuff like that, and the uh, power LED. Um, but once I figure that out, once I figure out like where the mains power switch is going to go and the uh, socket for the handpiece connector um, and all that, I can figure out because uh, <laughs> I got uh, kind of ripped off on AliExpress um, when I bought the uh, aluminium case for it. Uh, I wanted to buy one that was about 260 millimeters long, and they sold me one that was about 180 millimeters long, um, which uh, fortunately is still big enough to cram everything in, but not particularly comfortably. So I'm going to have to do quite a bit of sort of <laughs> smart juggling around of everything, and I'm going to have to have a couple of holes drilled through the front of the. Uh, front panel PCB to route wires for the main switch and the uh, thing because I don't have enough clearance to actually fit the uh, board uh, back far enough from the actual front panel because then the transformer will be in the way and so will everything else. So yeah, it's a bit annoying but fortunately I am actually able to use the enclosure that I bought even though it wasn't the one I actually ordered and they refused to give me a refund because it was um, too expensive or something and they wanted me to send it back but of course sending it back would have been more expensive than buying a whole new one and so I just thought stuff it well the thing's gonna fit so hey there we go but 
that's the thing with AliExpress. Um, yeah, they often send you things that aren't correct or are dodgy, and you have to watch out for that. So, while they can be quite cheap sometimes, it's not always the best place to go. So, yeah. Anyway, um, that's that. So that's a bit of a sort of, uh, I don't know, rant um, thing, random video about this, and yeah. Um, I decided to go with this uh, original pet kit 2 design um, from Microchip. This is the reference design. Uh, the only real difference is uh, where that I used surface mount components where they had surface mount components and um, everything else would have been mostly surface mount but I changed that to through hole because all the resistors and capacitors and that you know I already had those um, in through hole parts and the op amp in that you can't actually get a through hole version I don't think um, of these parts here it's not that easy so instead of trying to source something that has the same performance as that op amp in like a dip package or something. I'm sure it's possible but I just couldn't be bothered doing it so um, it was easier just to get the original service mount one, the exact same thing and just use that. Um, so yeah, so I'll just uh, plug it in and prove that it doesn't blow up if anyone's interested in that. <laughs> and I'll uh, show a little screen capture, well, basic thing anyway, of the uh, things. If I plug this into my computer here, uh, let's see, there we go. So you can see the uh, power light comes on and it lights brightly and it doesn't uh, fade off in about a second and there is no smoke coming out of anything. So that's a good start. So if you go to the computer here and uh, run a list USB command. It shows us we have the microchip tech uh, picket too, so it's uh, definitely showing up and everything is working there. And I haven't actually tested programming anything with it yet, but you know, it doesn't catch on fire and it does actually show up in the USB devices list, so it's probably fine. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it passes all the self-tests in the uh, Picket 2 software, which I've run on uh, Windows XP. I'm um, not on this computer, and I don't have the computer running, so I can't really show that right now. There we go. That's the uh, fun times of building yourself a Picket 2. Uh, don't um, don't put your op amp backwards, and uh, if you do swap. I guess the moral of the story is, if you are flipping uh, IC packages in your schematic editor, don't uh, forget to pay attention to the power pins or other pins that uh, may not be symmetrical with the uh, things you're flipping. So, yeah, just something to take note of. And also not to have crossing wires that uh, cross near pins, because they might magically join themselves together, and then you end up with traces connecting things that aren't supposed to be connected, which is always great fun. So, yeah. Anyway... Fortunately, though, it was much, it was pretty easy to uh, fix those errors, and the thing does seem to be working now. So there we go. Hopefully that was uh, at least slightly amusing, and I'll see you next time.